Hey everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for heart failure drugs as an introduction to pharmacology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the basics including some pathophysiology, cardiac glycosides like digoxin, and more. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, which of the following is a definition of heart failure? And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break in the video where you can pause and think about the answer. So the answer here is A, the heart's inability to supply adequate blood and oxygen to meet the body's demands. This is one of the definitions of heart failure. Heart failure results in a decreased cardiac output. And question number two, before administering a cardiac glycoside, the nurse assesses a client's vital signs as follows. Heart rate is 54, blood pressure is 135 over 86, Respiration rate is 24, temperature is 36.9, and O2 sat is 92%. This client has a diagnosis of COPD and heart failure. Which vital sign is the nurse most concerned about? And the answer here is A, heart rate. Cardiac glycosides reduce heart rate and increase the force of contractions of the heart. If the client's heart rate is below baseline, which is usually about 60 to 100 beats per minute, the medication should be held and the physician should be notified. Moving on to question number three, which of the following is not a goal in the treatment of heart failure? And the answer here is B, decrease gas exchange. All of the options are goals in the treatment of heart failure except for a decrease in gas exchange. During heart failure, the body would require increased oxygenation, perfusion, and circulation, meaning that a decrease in gas exchange would result in a negative outcome. Question number four, the human body's compensatory mechanisms of heart failure are extremely helpful in the long term, but suffer greatly at assisting your body in the short term. The answer here is B, false. The human body's compensatory mechanisms of heart failure are extremely helpful in the short term but suffer greatly in the long term. This is why heart failure may go unnoticed until a great amount of damage has already occurred. Basically, the body is good at maintaining the problem but only for so long before it can no longer keep up. Question number five, how do cardiac glycosides aid in the treatment of heart failure? And the answer here is C, decreased heart rate and increased force of contraction of the heart, like we mentioned earlier. These two effects combined allow for an increase in cardiac output and decreased workload of the heart, providing treatment to heart failure. Question number six, which of the following is a reasonable drug classification choice for the treatment of heart failure? The answer here is D, all of the above. All of the above medications will either decrease blood volume, decrease blood pressure, increase cardiac output, or do a combination of these effects, all of which are treatments that can aid in heart failure. Question number seven, the nurse notices that a client with heart failure has recently been gaining weight. The nurse assesses the client and observes an increase in peripheral edema. Which type of drug does the nurse expect the doctor will order based on this information? The answer here is B, a diuretic. Diuretics increase fluid excretion and are indicated for edema, weight gain, and for the treatment of heart failure. And our last question for this quiz, number eight, the nurse is reviewing lab values before the administration of digoxin and finds that the client's serum digoxin level is 0.4 nanograms per milliliter. What is the most appropriate action from the nurse? The right answer here is C, administer the digoxin and notify the physician as it is below the therapeutic range. Now this answer may vary depending on institution. The therapeutic serum digoxin range is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Therefore, the dose should be administered because it is below the normal range and the physician should be notified of the abnormal lab value. The physician may request a stat dose to increase the serum digoxin level if the patient's vital signs remain adequate. And that's it for the heart failure drug quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.